Welcome to our talk on Wayfaring Exhibition, 19, Photography in 1970s, 80s, Taiwan. My name is Olivier Krishu, um, and I'm here with uh, our co-curator, uh, Shusha Chen. Um, the way that things will, will work today is I'm going to get us underway and we'll introduce the exhibition and then we'll also be taking questions um, in the uh, Q&A box. Many of you will be familiar with the webinar format. Um, just to get us underway though, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you from the unceded lands of the, no, of <coughs> the um, Wangal and Gadigal people here in Sydney, where I live and work. Um, and also that the exhibition, of course, I'd like to pay my respects to the elders of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people in Canberra, where the exhibition is taking place. Um, uh, as I said, uh, my name's Olivier. I'm going to keep the self-introductions very short because um, our bios are sort of available um, in the materials around the exhibition. Um, and on that note, there is a, a booklet accompanying the exhibition. We'll put the link in the um, chat uh, throughout the discussion so that you can access that if you if you haven't had a chance to get to the exhibition space. Our talk today is really based on taking you through the exhibition space, um, talking through some of the works and introducing some of the background to the project, how it came about. Um, we are trying to keep this relatively short so that we can have some comments, feedback and questions um, from our audience, which I welcome you to put in the Q&A. Uh, a reminder that um, if you haven't noticed, our session is being recorded. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, and I'll get us underway then. Um, wayfaring the uh, exhibition, I'll bring up my slides as I, as I do this. Um, so excuse me for a second, I'm gonna share my screen. And that takes us to there. Okay, um, so Wayfaring explores photography in Taiwan during the 1970s and 80s, and um, it features 35 works by 12 photographers drawn mostly from the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts collection, which is in Taichung. So these works were made in a period of what I'm sure many of you are aware was huge political and social transformation before and after the official lifting of martial law in Taiwan in 1987, uh, which lasted almost four decades, 38 years, I think, um, depending this discussion, of course, around when uh, martial law officially began. Taiwan was facing diplomatic isolation through the 1970s with the loss of its UN seat uh, in 1971, for example. There was also the death of Chiang Kai-shek in 1975. And throughout the 1970s, there was a shifting of diplomatic recognition um, to the People's Republic of China, including by um, Australia, of course. But there was already a complexity to Taiwan society due to its Japanese colonial past, tensions between um, so-called mainlanders or Waishengren and Taiwanese communities, as well as the political repression and the impacts of that repression, um, often on, on so the you know, local Taiwanese communities throughout the martial law period. So the, the, on, in addition to this, there's also importantly, I think the social and environmental costs of economic growth. So Taiwan had of course become one of the four little dragon economies um, of the, the 1970s and 80s. Um, and this was taking its toll on ordinary Taiwanese as well, many of whom were not necessarily beneficiaries of this top-down uh, growth. And people were demanding not simply a democratic change, but also recognition, I think more particularly, of individual and collective identities, rights, and rights to their own histories. And you'll see that in some of the work in the exhibition. Great, thank you, Olivier, for um, your introduction of the background. So um, one of the key aims for this exhibition, um, therefore, was to show the sheer diversity of the practices at this time and recognize their interconnections. Many of the photographers had worked as photojournalists 
and many knew each other really well, worked together, um, their friends, and also even as teachers and students, it's quite intergenerational. Um, the title Wayfaring is inspired by the term Zhao Lu, meaning find a path or a road, a phrase often used by um, seminal photographer Zhang Zhaotang to refer to the photo practice at the time. Wayfaring points to both an introspective searching as well as actual journeys um, the artists, these photographers undertook to their hometowns or to rural areas, exploring the increasingly diverse idea of place and people, finding voice in Taiwan uh, in this particular period. We are developing a publication at the moment, and with this exhibition, we are asking ourselves about what Taiwan photography history and practices mean to our understanding of um, photo photographic medium in Asia, um, but also beyond Asia, and um, um, really more broadly. Um, so now we'll, we'll sort of walk you into the exhibition space. And um, on this, first of all, you can see work, um, if I can bring up a, uh, a laser pointer, um, you can see work by the seminal photographer um, whom Shusha just mentioned, Zhang Zhaotang. Um, there are three works flanking the entrance of the exhibition space um, by Zhang Zhaotang, and these are the, the three works here. Um, and this is really to acknowledge not only his role as uh, an important uh, photographer, also a curator, practitioner, often a mentor to young, a younger generation of photographers, and really a connection to an older generation as well. These works were also taken in the mid uh, to early 1960s, and so they importantly recognize that while we're talking about the 1970s and 80s, um, these decades also sort of seep before and after, and that his work points to a particular sort of transition um, that happened between the 60s and the 70s. Um, one work is presented on a separate wall on the other side of the, the entrance. Um, if we're looking back um, to the, the entrance of the gallery, one of his works is on this side, two of his works are on that side. Um, and excuse me as I'm, as I'm going back and forth between these slides. Um, they suggest in this way uh, a kind of beginning and an end to try and create a loop with another photographer's work, Gao Dongli, who um, we'll introduce at the very end of, of this discussion. At the time, Zhang Taotang was inspired actually by absurdist literature and theatre, which was influential with some sort of young practitioners, intellectuals in Taiwan at the time, and they signal a sort of conscious experimentation um, an avant-garde style performative critique of cultural conserv uh, conservatism. And he's spoken about this being a sort of counterpoint to boredom and a sense of disaffection uh, at the time. Um, next to, to this work, by contrast, is actually part of a series by Wang Xin, so who was a pioneer of reportage photography in Taiwan. So a very different style of work. And these images are from her series, Farewell Orchid Island, made in the mid 1970s, but they weren't published actually um, as a book until the mid 1980s. Um, Orchid Island is of course home to the indigenous Tao people. And this was just as the island was opening to tourism after it had been um, designated a kind of uh, ethnographic research reserve actually from the Japanese period. Wang has photographed in indigenous communities across Taiwan over many decades uh, subsequently um, and presents often glimpses of contemporary cultures entangled in urbanism, modernity and Christianity trying to sort of navigate their way amid many of the other sort of political and um, economic changes, environmental changes that we've described. Um, on the other hand, um, as and so this is Wang Qin's work here, um, and next to it are um, a selection of works by two photographers on the same wall. Uh, one is Zhuang Ling. Uh, these are um, two portraits by Zhuang Ling and Ran Yijong. 
Um, and so these uh, just give you an example of Zhuanglin's work on the right and Rai Zhong on the left. Um, and these are included, so in, in Zhuanglin's portrait, for example, here is one of um, Chen Da, um, an itinerant musician. Um, and he also has a portrait of the self-taught painter Hong Dong, who are both important uh, symbols really of a kind of folk arts movement at that time. And they suggest how classic portraiture and documentary photography could reflect, nevertheless, the sort of nativist politics um, of the era. And you see that in the Man and Land series by Rani Zhong, which really visited uh, rural villages and um, depicted life in, in villages um, in places that were not part of the kind of urban boom of, of Taiwan that were very much about land. Um, moving to into the exhibition. Um, yeah, um, is the next couple of walls. Yeah, um, so it's quite a similar yet different um, portrait style um, compared to um, Zhuang Ling's work. Um, and here we could see two, three photographers here, but particularly I would like to um, talk about uh, Xie Chunde. Uh, Xie Chunde's uh, series, Faces of an Era. Um, and we included um, three portraits of um, influential intellectual figures um, taken by Xie Chunde. For example, um, the one on the left here, that's Lin Huai Min, really famous dancer, choreographer, founder of um, Cloud Gate, the modern dance theater established in 1973. And on the right here, this is the only colored fo uh, uh, photograph. And in this show uh, we chosen is the portrait, the back of um, really famous modernist painter, Xi De Jin, um, himself um, opening opening up towards his own painting, uh, which in reflects Xi's embrace of his sexuality. As um, some of us might know that he came out as gay to his friends uh, quite early on. Indeed, gender um, identity was an important aspect of the soul searching in this uh, period, particularly towards the end of the martial law. Uh, next to these, so just to give you your bearings, so uh, alongside these works by um, Xie Chung De, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, these very different portraits by Zhen Yongbing. Um, so in these works, uh, by contrast, whereas Xie Chung De is really sort of mapping an intellectual landscape um, and a, a sort of avant-garde intellectual landscape at the time, Zhen Yongbing instead is focusing his camera on the homeless and lower classes living in an urban slum area of Taipei. So Jin, who had actually studied in Japan, used medium format, um, this square um, format, which is a larger negative for those unfamiliar, larger than a 35 mil, uh, because he believed that this amount of detail and the particular dynamics of taking medium format photography uh, gave a more personal engagement with the subject. And you can see that in the, the nature of his relationship to the sitters, which is very intimate and familiar. Um, and he photographed around this area quite a, a lot. He had actually photographed earlier in the 1980s as well, using a different camera. Um, and this type of work of um, a, a different class, uh, a different the sort of fringes or marginal uh, identities in um, urban Taipei is something which um, He Jingtai, another photographer at the far end of the next gallery space, uh, also focuses on. So in He Jingtai's case, he focused not only on these kinds of victims of economic development, but also victims of industrial labor and political repression, and quite particularly victims of the white terror era. Uh, alongside these, um, and I'll just, sorry, alongside these here, so this is the full wall again. So alongside these, you'll see there's obviously a set of portraits and we're trying to create kind of contrast between the different approaches. Um, and alongside these are uh, these portraits by Ye Qingfeng. And so Ye Qingfeng, unlike Zhen Yongbing's social documentary style, Ye Qingfeng's um, 
series, which is actually called Towards the End of Martial Law, uh, presents a more candid individual sort of perspective. The image of the yawning officer here taken in Taitong in 1982, um, which was just before Ye Ching-Fang actually completed his own military service, um, is the sort of hero image of this exhibition. And it alludes for us to the exhaustion of political authority towards the end of the martial law period. Um, and many of Ye's images contain this kind of strange or unexpected uh, detail or perspective. And so here on the right, for example, is an image of these figures on the beach in Kaohsiung. And in the background, you see this massive tanker ship, which is grounded um, and on its side, um, if you can see the image in a little bit more detail. So there's often these sorts of details which um, are giving sort of uncanny atmosphere to his, um, his depiction of this era. Um, now we're moving into the largest space of the gallery. So we've walked down um, and we're moving into this space here. Yeah, so we're moving um, from the war, the two wars of portraitures of, you know, um, cultural elites to, as well as ordinary people and marginalized people we towards this uh, largest war of the show. Um, it displays really diverse words from surreal images to photojournalistic works and arrangement further blurs the salon aesthetics approach, blending different photographers' works and different dimensions across the, the, the wall. The first work that we encountered, this really sort of life-sized work um, um, by Ho Chong Hui. Psychiatry issues and the unconscious gradually um, attracted public attention in 1980s Taiwan. These large works are from Hao Chonghui's Long Fa Tang series, sought at a mental asylum run by a Buddhist temple where Hao Chonghui himself had been a patient uh, because of his depression. Um, I think it was in 1981. The blur images are a result of Hao's shooting style, but also duration of the films as Ho did not um, develop them until years later. And, and, and the one on the right here that it, it is uh, really the uh, really big work that um, high up on our wall. And moving from uh, Ho Chung Hui, um, actually these two uh, photographers work that we sort of try to blend them together. Olivia, if, if you could um, go back a little to see the wall that Ho Chong Hui is um, uh, the one here and then at the top and under beneath it that three works are Lian Hui Lings. And we would like to put them together because they both sort of question or, or, or expose or, or trying to um, discuss this mental health psychiatry um, state of mind towards, particularly towards the last decade of um, martial law. And Hui Ling's uh, works here, as uh, we could see, explores the psyche uh, through, um, though through animals in everyday settings. So it's moved from the um, mental patients, Lian Hui Ling really has her acute eyes on animals. And she pictures these animals at eye level, conveying a sense of uneasiness and pathos as well and and it also play with um our using the camera as the apparatus to replace our eyes so so we can see the image on the left here that the girl at the front is blurry but the the focus of the camera or the focus of our consciousness is really at the back with with the dog and maybe a lady um um, um at, at the um, left corner and moving from this really uh, sort of surreal um, images that we um, landed next to quite a contrast style by uh, photojournalist Xia San Tai. Um, as I mentioned, many of um, these photographers had worked as photojournalists. Um, Ho Chong Hui was a photojournalist, and Hui Ling was a photojournalist, and, and um, they often work together and work for the same press as well. And Xia San Tai, um, the same, but um, uh, unlike other two uh, photographers, Xia San Tai continue 
his uh, career as a photojournalist until today and still producing really large body of work. Here that um, Si San Tai um, has been documenting po political movements um, of the transitional period. Here he captured not the action, but the periphery of um, or the periphery or the aftermath of the protest. Uh, on the left here is the temporary baseball field taken in 1989, which is um, two years after the, lift, the lifting of the martial law, shows a dynamic scene of children playing baseball on the road after, lane, after rain. But if you look closer or looking at the back, the road is deserted due to a protest and police blockage in the distance. And on the right here is the um, giving me back um, Mahaka language movement, and you know, really different from typical protest image um, um, to show the uh, emotion and sensation of the, 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 the movement. Here that you, you see this mass Hakka people using uh, Sun Yat Sen as their um, leader of this movement because Sun Yat Sen himself, um, probably many of you um, don't know, um, was Hakka himself. So it's quite so humorously, uh, cleverly um, uh, utilized by the uh, protesters. Um, so looking down the, the gallery space um, towards the end of this wall is a work here on the left, uh, which I'll talk about first by Gao Tongli. And Gao Tongli uh, had a fine arts education and originally studied sculpture. He had actually won a, a national sculpture prize even before entering university. And the presentation of his works in this format is actually a reference to this sort of sculptural background uh, and the fact that he has worked across, um, although he is known as a photographer and also was a, a photojournalist, similar to others that Shusha just mentioned, he nevertheless has always worked across many different media. The naked and painted bodies um, that you see in, in his works are, um, and you can see them better here, are really visceral and, and have a kind of universal quality because they lack a specific identity. However, the mask on the table here, for those who are familiar with the, the artist, is actually a self-portrait. Uh, and so it might bring up uh, the idea of a death mask um, or the copy. Of course, photography is, an, is a medium associated with the ability to make copies and iterations, but sculpture is as well. Almost all of the works in Wayfaring um, form some kind of portraiture, which is interesting. And Gal's work breaks this down in some ways, highlighting the, the basic, the fundamental issue of the body, um, simultaneously familiar and alien. So we all, of course, have a body, uh, and yet the presentation of them here is something that um, sort of enhances the sense of unfamiliarity or the uncanny. Um, and it's interesting that these are um, these connect to to the beginning of the the exhibition, as I'll mention in a second. But um, alongside Carl's work is another set of portraits, which I, I mentioned um, a little bit earlier. He Jingtai. This photographer um, is another one, a photographer who really focused on uh, marginalized communities and figures. Uh, and in this particular work on the right, for example, he's made a portrait of uh, Mr. Xu Wang uh, and all of the, the sitters, the, although they may be homeless or they may be um, sort of working uh, class or in this case, for example, um, maimed, um, he names them quite specifically as a kind of recognition. And so in this work, uh, this portrait of Mr. Xu, He's pictured straight on. He's standing very tall, of course, and we don't immediately notice perhaps that he's maimed. Um, and this is possibly um, from a work accident, a labor accident, because that's a theme that Ho Jintai, Ho Jintai actually focused on in another series. Um, and alongside, of course, the calendars of bikini girls um, form a strange connection to the man's body and an unexpected conversation um, with the, the work alongside it. 
from Gautam Lee. And so there's, again, this sort of emphasis on the body. Um, this takes us to the, the, the sort of formal end of the exhibition space. Uh, and yet, uh, if we look back down the space um, between Gautam Lee's work, there is an echo of the Zhang Daotang series um, from the mid 1960s, which flanks the entrance and the sense of the performing body. Um, once again, these works um, on the mountaintop, for example. So this creates a kind of spatial loop and a conceptual loop uh, in the exhibition through which we wanted to, I guess, push against the idea that there's simply a linear stylistic progression between one style and another, or between one subject and another, and instead show a greater complexity um, to individual practices. So although we were looking at the martial law period, the end of the martial law period, I think that um, it's also um, important to emphasize that um, these individual practices are happening within a political context, but not always simply determined by that context. There's also underlying personal histories and issues, uh, as we've seen, um, that leads to this sort of diversity that we were trying to emphasize. So that takes us to, um, as I said, it's going to be a very quick sort of walk through the exhibition space, um, ending again with Zhang Zhaotang's sort of portrait here. Um, I did mention, and it's in the chat for those who'd like to see a little bit more background uh, on the individual photographers. Um, there is the, the catalog online, which is available now. Um, and there's also a, a, a set of short videos. This which, I just um, share. Okay, so there's a set of short videos there, which, um, which takes you through in a little bit more detail the um, individual um, parts of the, of the exhibition. So um, with that, I want to say thanks very much for joining us today. Um, I'll just stop sharing before we end. Um, and I hope that some of you do make it to the exhibition space uh, in Canberra. And very lastly, we'd like to thank the Central on China in the World again um, for supporting this and Nancy Chiu in particular. Um, for her in the background all the time, but nevertheless indispensable work in making all of these events and the exhibition happen. So thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.